Right, let's go back to our old friend, the Harry Smith map. You will see in the top left corner of this map is the scale 1 is to 50,000. Well, what does that mean? We could say that that's one centimeter on the map is 50,000 centimeters on the ground. But obviously 50,000 centimeters is a bit of an awkward number to work with. So if we convert it to meters, then we've got to divide this by 100 because there are 100 centimeters in a meter. And to divide by 100, we just put block out the last two zeros. And then it becomes one centimeter on the map is 500 meters. And that works with any scale. If you want to know centimeters to meters. If we want to know centimeters to kilometers, there are 100,000 centimeters in a kilometer. So we've got to block off five zeros. And you'll see here one, two, three, four zeros. We even have to block off the five. In other words, we're putting the decimal point before the five. So that, in other words, is one centimeter is 0.5 of a kilometer, which of course is 500 meters. So in other words, on this map, one centimeter is half a kilometer. So if you look at that, for instance, the size of this little lake here is approximately half a centimeter, it's about 250 meters long. If we measure the distance from the bend in the railway over there to the bend in the railway here, it is five centimeters. 5 times 100, 5 times 500 is 2,500, 2 and a half kilometers, 2,500 meters, 2 and a half kilometers. So 1 centimeter, 500 meters. So 5 centimeters, 5 times 500 meters, 2,500 meters or 2 and a half kilometers. And so that's a very, very useful measure. And that is the measure that you will be most commonly asked to do in exams using a 1 in 50,000 map. You can also commonly use the one in 10,000 orthophoto map. So we'll have a look at one of those just to see how the scale differs now. Right, looking at the one in 10,000 map for Miermal, which is in the free state, we can see very clearly the difference in the scale. Here is the one in 10,000 orthophoto, and orthophoto is a special kind of map that is based on a photograph, an aerial photograph. Here we have the town of Miermal, and you can see it fills up most of the map. On this same 1 in 50,000 map, you will see there is the town of Miermal, and you can see very clearly this little free state town laid out as a rectangle. If we measure that distance, if this map is 1 in 50,000, and this is 1 in 10,000, 10,000 into 50,000 goes five times. So in other words, this should be exactly five times bigger than the one in 50,000 map. So let's measure that and see what it looks like. Okay, so on the one in 50,000 map, let's measure it in, in millimeters so we get it exactly. It is 3.4 millimeters. So 3.434 um, millimeters, 3.4 centimeters, 34 millimeters. So 3.4 times 5 gives us 150 plus 20 is 170. So it should be 170 millimeters almost exactly. And if we go there, you can see there you are 170 millimeters. Okay, so in other words, the one in 10,000 map is five times bigger than the one in 50,000. Right, let's do our trick of covering up zeros. We want to know centimeters to meters. We cover up two zeros and we've got one centimeter is 100 meters. If we cover up five zeros or move the decimal point to the left five places, we get one centimeter on the map is 0.1 of a kilometer or 100 meters which again correlates with that idea. So in other words, if you look over here, you've got this athletic track, and where the athletic track is, you would expect the 100 meters to be un, um, one centimeter long, and there it is there. So the 100 meter is more or less the length of the straight on the athletic track, where you fit a rugby field or a soccer field in there, and you've got your 100 meters or one centimeter. So it's always a good idea to confirm that. 
if you find an, a map that you're not sure of, find the local school and measure the length of their rugby or soccer field or athletic track and you get a very good idea of what the scale is. Obviously you can't use that for an exact measurement of the scale, but it just gives you a rough estimate that you can use if you're not sure what the map is. Right, so those are the two common scales that you are going to use in your matric exam and they will always ask you questions about them, how to measure distances, those kind of things. Now a straight line distance is easy because you measure it in centimetres and if it's the one in 50,000 map you multiply it by 500 to get metres and if it's the one in um, 10,000 map you multiply it by 100 to get meters. So that is easy and we'll do some of those calculations later. But if you are going along a bend then it becomes somewhat more complicated because when you measure along a bend it's, you're obviously going to lose accuracy. So if we for instance wanted to measure the distance around these curves here on this road. We want to measure the distance along this road from one edge of the map to the other. You've got the bends and you could do it by measuring straight bits and adding them all up but again there are always some tricks that work. So the trick that works in this instance is to take a piece of paper and mark off your starting point. So if we're going to go along that road from one end to the other. We're going to mark off our starting point and then using the tip of our pen as a pivot, as we go around the bend, we just pivot it like that. Hold the pen down and then swivel the paper around the tip of your pen and as you go around you're progressing along the road. So around there, move the pen a little bit around and around. Obviously you can do this with a pencil as well, it doesn't have to be a pen. And then the straight bit's easy, you extend all the way along there and then around the bend and the straight bit to the end. And we mark that carefully. So we now have two end points marked and we can measure those off carefully with our ruler. And we have got 20 almost exactly 26 centimeters. Right, 26 centimeters times 500 meters is 13,000 meters. Now notice something about that. 26 times 500 meters is 13,000. But if we say 26 divided by two, what do we get? We get 13 kilometers. So if you want to convert the centimetres to kilometres, just divide by 2, because 500 metres is half a kilometre. So you can either multiply by 500 to get metres, or you can divide by 2 to get kilometres. Likewise, it works exactly the same way on the 1 in 10,000, except that instead of using 500, you use 100. So the length of the town along that edge there is almost exactly 8 centimeters and it's a 1 in 10,000 map so we multiply by 100. So 8 centimeters is 800 meters so the edge of the town there in that direction is 800 meters or 0.8 of a kilometer and again we can say right 1 centimeter is 100 meters which is 0.1 of a kilometer so 8 times 0.1 gives us 0.8 of a kilometer. So 0.8 of a kilometer, 800 meters, same thing. And you will always be asked to do kilometers and meters. Well, not always in every exam, but you must know how to do kilometers and meters because they're sure to ask one or the other and sometimes both. Right, so that is scale distance. And we need to look now at how to construct a scale line. And a scale line is simply a graphic representation of what that scale looks like as a picture. Now I think we're all familiar with scale lines on maps, and, um, but we'll show you again a few from the atlas just to get an idea how it works. Here we're going to have a look at an atlas map with a scale line. This is a map of California and here you can see the scale is 1 to 3 million. 
Now if we do our trick again of covering up the last two zeros, that means that one centimeter on this map is 30,000. So 30,000 meters is 30 kilometers. So if you look down here at the scale line, there is 10, 20, 30 kilometers. And if we measure that with our ruler again, you will see that that sh then should be one centimeter to 30 kilometers. And there you go. So that is what a scale line does. It means that we can use the scale line to measure distance without having to do the calculation. So if I measure a distance on the map, say, that little bit of coast there, and I put it against the scale line, I can see that that is 60 kilometers. So that's how we use a scale line. And they have it in, in this case because it's a map that's used around the world in kilometers and in miles. Generally, South African maps, of course, unless they're very old, only have it in kilometers. So if we have a look at our 1 in 50,000 map again, and as I said, this is an old map, so it doesn't only have the kilometer scale line, it has the scale line in miles as well. So um, if we go and have a look at that scale line here, you will see at the top here, there is our scale line in meters, with the 1 in 50,000 scale above it. So again, we can see if we measure 1,000 meters, that's going to be 2 centimeters, because... One centimeter is 500 meters, so 1,000 meters is going to be two centimeters. And likewise here, what we quite often do with a scale is to the left of the zero, we divide it up into smaller units. So each of those small little units there is 100 meters. Okay, so a scale line is just a way to allow us to take a shortcut if we want to measure a distance quickly. So if I measure a distance up here, and we can say, right, it is going to be three and a half centimeters there, that little bit of road. And I put it up against my scale line, three and a half centimeters is about 1.8 kilometers. But what happens if I want it more accurately than that, then what I do is I put the three and a half on the one. There's our three and a half kilometers and I work this way and then I can count so that's one kilometer plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it's about 0.75. So 1.75, which is correct, of course, because 3.5 divided by two to get kilometers is 1.75. So that is how scale lines work. And if we page through the atlas, you will see all sorts of different scale lines and um, what you need to do is practice. So get, a, get an atlas and page through, look at all the different scales. You will see that the smaller the detail is on the map, then the smaller the scale. So if you've got a map of the whole of the United States, that would be a scale of say one to 30 or even 50 million. Um, whereas a scale just of, of California, as I've just shown you, it's about one to three million and you come all the way to larger scale maps like the one in 50,000 map and the one in 10,000 orthophoto map. Notice you've got to get to a scale of about one in 10,000 before you see the real detail on the ground. So that's why the orthophoto map is, is a very useful map because it's actually a photograph and you can see detail down to the size of a motor car and that kind of thing on the map. Um, whereas obviously on a 1 in 50,000 map, because you can't see the detail, you tend to use symbols more. Unless, of course, the detail is whole mountain ranges. So if you want to see a map of the Himalayas and it stretches right across southern Asia, then you could use a 1 in 50 million map or even smaller scale and you would be able to see the whole of the Himalayas laid out without having to use any symbols other than color shading. Right, so that is map scale. As, as I say, you need to practice not only um, looking at maps and understanding the scale and getting to be able to estimate them. And remember what I said, if you've got a map of the whole of Africa, that was about one is to 27 million 
um, call it 1 to 30 million if your map of Africa fits up the whole page. Um, if it's South Africa filling up the whole page, then it would be about 1 to 3 million. So that just gives you a rough idea. An A4 map of South Africa would be about 1 to 3 million. And then going right down, as I said, to the larger scales of 1 in 50,000, where you see um, a fair chunk of countryside, for instance, around Harrismith, or 1 to 10,000, where you see the whole village of Miermal in some detail.